Many landscaping companies kick off a new year with an onboarding event where they're going to share the employee handbook, core values, and the plan for the year, which is great. But what happens when the inevitable turnover happens and you're onboarding a new hire during spring and summer and they just don't get that time with the owner or the managers that they would if they came on during the beginning of the year? That's where the power of video can really help. And in today's episode, I interview one of my clients who is going to share how he made a home video studio for under a couple hundred bucks and made onboarding videos, including bilingual ones, uh, to onboard his staff throughout the year with the great leverage of video. Plus, in this episode, I'm going to share how I've literally made thousands of online training videos at Ramblin' Jackson, where I host them online to keep them organized, and a cool online software that we use for our Ramblin' Jackson University. So let's dig into today's episode to see how you can get started using videos way faster and less expensively and way more easily than you ever imagined possible. We weren't getting the leads that I knew we could. We weren't getting the right leads. What started happening is that our, our leads are more qualified. Our sales have probably gone up by about 10 to 15% a year. We're going to increase our sales volume by a million dollars in a year. All right, folks, today we're here with one of my clients, Tim Stevens from f and Landscaping down in Colorado Springs. I've worked with Tim for a while. I really enjoy Tim. Uh, we read a lot of the same books and uh, uh, we were just having a conversation. Following up, uh, last time I saw Tim, we, we saw each other in person at the, at the Pro Green Expo, really taking for granted the opportunity to hang out in person and eat food and whatever we did right before this whole pandemic hit. And um, since then, um, uh, Tim has produced videos and we were talking about, you know, how you've made video training programs for your employees. And so today I uh, wanted to chat with Tim and see, you know, share with us how you made those and how, you're, how you also made a bilingual version of it, which is amazing. And before we get into that, Tim, what is F and B? What does the F and B stand for in F and B landscaping? You had to go there, didn't you? I did. I did. So it stands for Franks and Beans. So now, now it's out. Franks and Beans. And uh, it's a long story how I got there, but it's <laughs> unfortunately it's from a movie and you all can go do your research and figure out what movie it's from. Right. Well, that's good. I, I like that though. And uh, I, I just remember when we started working, I was like, hey, what is the F and B for? Like your name isn't, you know, Frank, you know, or, or, or something. And uh, anyways, I love that story and your, your clients enjoy it. And it, you, how long, tell us quick background, how long have you been in business and what do you do? Um, so I started my business in 2002, went through some transitions and the current business really re reformed in 2007. So we've been going since 2007 in our current state. Um, we're a full service landscaping company. So we do residential uh, construction. We do uh, commercial construction. We do commercial maintenance. Uh, we do irrigation. Um, we do basically everything. So we're a design build firm as well on the residential side. So do it all. Great, great. And um, last time we talked, you had gotten some video equipment. And so just tell us kind of quickly, what, what did you do at your home office so that way you could produce video? Yeah, so real simply, I just didn't really want what you see behind me um, there because what what I have back here changes um, all the time. I have different books. My wife and I work out of this office together. So I wanted something that was uniformed that if I need to go back in and edit or go back in and add to it, I can make it look the same. So I purposely wore what I'm wearing today. Um, and then I have a backdrop that I had my sign company make. It's just basically, it's an outdoor uh, sign made out of tarp material that I attach to my bookshelf and it rolls down behind me, um, has our logo kind of on it. You'll see in a little bit. And then um, I got some extra lights to put up. 
they're not great. Uh, it's definitely could be improved. Um, and then I have a little microphone um, that I use. And then primarily I use Zoom to do it. And so the goal was to make it repeatable and that I can duplicate it with whatever topic we're talking about and the look will be the same so that next year, if I do it again, I can probably almost duplicate the look and not and make it somewhat seamless. So I won't necessarily have to go back and redo all of these videos. I might just be able to do a new introduction or a new conclusion or something to that effect. So that was kind of it. I kept it very simple. Um, and I tried to do it in a way that when I redo it or set up again, I can have my camera, my computer in the exact same spot. I marked my desk. I mean, I, I have it all marked so that it's very easy to come up with the exact same situation. And I really didn't spend that much money. Uh, the tarp was about $100. I've got about $150 in Amazon lights. And uh, my microphone was about $50. So I kept it pretty inexpensive. And then I just use an iMac. My, my existing iMac camera, um, and I think it worked, it gets the job done. Yeah, that, that's great, Tim. Um, I'm a big fan of that, of, of making video content for my employees because the, the value of it for you, the business owner, is extreme leverage, right? It might take you some time to get this stuff set up, record it, trim it up, organize it, but, but let's, let's pretend that you spent 20 minutes making a five minute video. The beauty of that is you, you get years of leverage out of that five minute video. So when you get somebody new, you can send them those things. And that way it frees up more time for you to coach and mentor your employees and less time, not that you don't need to train them, but some of this basic stuff of video is going to be a, a better use of both of your time. So so tell us a little bit, what are some of the videos that you decided to make to train your employees? So the, the primary one that I did um, that got this all started was our handbook. Um, and our handbook is something that I feel very passionate about going through with every employee. I don't just hand it to them and tell them to go home and read it. Um, we, we sit down at the beginning of the year, we sit down with our entire company and we go, basically we go page by page through the handbook. and we don't read the entire handbook, but we hit all the really important items. The things that I know year after year come back to be issues with discipline or, you know, uniforms or, um, you know, paid time off, paid holidays. The things that I know they're going to have questions about, we go through and we hit very carefully. And when you're in a group setting, it's, it's great because you get a lot of questions and you get feedback. However, that drags it out and makes it really long. With the video, I can just go through very quickly and read, and I don't um, improv, you know, I don't add any improv or, or add any, um, I don't elaborate on anything. I read exactly what's in the handbook and I go straight down the list. So it's very clear cut what they need to absorb. And then I hid in the text of it, I hid three passwords that I just randomly say. And at the end of the time that they watch it, they don't get credit for it. They're not, they're not allowed to sign off on the handbook until they've given us those passwords. And so um, as kind of hokey as that sounds, it's worked really well because I knew people would sit down and watch the video and just, you know, zip to the end and sign it and be yeah, done with it. Right. Well, you can't do that without the passwords. So, um, so that's worked really well. Um, so that video was um, done then again in Spanish with one of my uh, managers who basically did the exact same thing I did. He just duplicated it. I hosted it. I narrated the intro and I wrapped it up at the end, but I actually had him on screen and I had him reading through the Spanish version of our handbook. So they're basically two identical videos, one with me, one with him. Um, and then we also did our company uh, culture, our, background, you know, how we got started, all the, the history of the company, our core values, all the things that, again, I want every new employee to understand. We did a video for it so that now as, you know, in landscaping, you get a ton of turnover. You have a lot of new and hires. It's really hard to um, schedule onboarding sessions mm. with it on video. Now I don't have to schedule it. They can do it whenever they have time or they can come to the office, sit down and watch it on their phone. It gives us a lot of um, uh, 
control over when we do that. And years past, it's been really hard to get four or five employees to all come sit down together for a new onboarding meeting. Um, that has just killed us schedule-wise. Now, that's a thing of the past. We don't worry about that. They just watch it, and they don't show up the first day without having all the stuff signed off on the videos. It's worked really well. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. It creates amazing leverage again for you to to onboard people throughout the year when they come in, uh, without you having to also personally do all of those one-on-one -on -one meetings. And you'll probably still do some level of those one-on-ones, but hey, in spring and summertime, it's going to be hard for you to spend as much time as you'd like, um, as in you know maybe the beginning of the year where you guys have those those kickoff meetings for the year. Tell us, what are some of the results of this? Are, are people actually watching them? Are they learning better? Are they like, what is, why, why do this? <laughs> yeah, so it's simple. Last year, I, I, I set up a video camera at our kickoff meeting and I actually recorded the handbook uh, presentation. And um, it was like almost two hours and I couldn't edit it down. I couldn't. It, it was just this big animal that was, uh, I couldn't manage it. So it didn't work. This year with having COVID stuff going on, not being able to meet, uh, the Zoom stuff came to light and it's just been, it's a no brainer. It's so easy. It's basically, it's free and uh, makes it work really well. Um, YouTube is where I host them. I probably need to find a better hosting site for it. Um, Sometimes it's been a little difficult for the employees to get it to work on their phone or whatever because of YouTube. So we'll be looking at doing something a little better with that. But the results have been great. Um, you know, it's taken a lot of time off myself, my managers, my office manager, and it's kind of put that time on the new employee. Um, so it's saved us a lot of time. I think we've probably had 25 or 30 employees watch this now. and um, you know, that's 25 or 30, probably realistically, that's 25 or 30 hours that now one of my staff is not having to, to do this with. Wow. So I think that's, that's value right in and of itself. Yeah. And, and, and as things change, you know, you can go back and edit these videos, like you said, and, and a lot of the stuff won't change and you'll probably get several years of use out of each of these videos. Um, I'm going to share. Um, I'm going to share my screen and show you. I over the last 11 years, I have literally produced thousands of training videos at Ramblin' Jackson for my internal team, in addition to all the marketing. And um, I'm going to share with you how you know. So we started using YouTube, and and uh, for those of you listening or watching, I I think YouTube is great. It's free. You can you can make the videos private. So that way only people who have the link to them can see them. So that way if your customers are Googling you or checking you out on YouTube, they're not gonna see it. But one, one of the drawbacks is um, it's a little harder to organize all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the tool that I really like using is called Wistia. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, and Wistia is the, the tool that we use and I remember they found me through a Facebook advertisement. And it was like, are you tired of using YouTube and having sloppy videos? I'm like, yeah, I kind of am. And so I've been a customer for maybe six or seven years. And so I have um, you know, a sales training folder. We, we have a whole university that I'll show you next. Uh, but what I like about Wistia is you can add these little sections here. So you could, you could add a section called um, Employee Handbook. And you can kind of organize and group your videos together under there. Um, I, I created a whole system on how to do sales. And I've organized things in this way, um, including a, a challenge. I've, I've taught my people how to produce video. And I have some videos here. What we use is, is actually a tool called Lessonly. And Lessonly allows us to, it actually creates an online course out of our out of our material so I can do a um, a uh, I can assign things to people and I can quiz them and I can see if they actually completed them and I can get um, you know little feedback from them on what their responses were 
And then when I meet with them, I'm really prepared to uh, review their responses to the material. So I think, you know, phase one, you know, build, simply record some videos, put them on YouTube, keep it in a Google Doc, even a spreadsheet with links, simple enough. It could be an email, honestly, that you send to people like, start out real simple here um, and just get the videos done. So kudos to you for getting the videos done because the hardest thing I hear is, you know, and I remember my, my first videos were awful. Um, tell us a little bit, how did you power through like making video is weird and uncomfortable? How did you, how did you muster through getting the first one done? Yeah, that was a big one. Um, I, I mean, I've been talking about this for years and every time I sit down to think about doing it, I think, nah, I, I, I don't want to do it. I can't do it. It's beyond my skill. It's out of my pay grade, whatever. I, I shouldn't be doing it. And um, I'm always, you know, I, I get nervous talking in front of people other than my employees. So I uh, just never got around to doing it. But when the COVID stuff kind of hit and we were really forced into working remotely and working on the video, um, it just kind of starts to happen. I think the first 30 seconds, you're kind of aware of yourself. You're looking at the screen. You're kind of thinking, oh gosh, you know, my hat's crooked or whatever. Um, and then once you get into the meat and potatoes of what you're talking about, that kind of just goes away. You can read through the handbook um, in a way that takes some of the stress away. Because what I did was I went through and you know, you, I highlighted what I was going to talk about. So I don't even have to think about what I'm going to talk about and what I'm not going to talk about. It's all highlighted for me. Anything that's not highlighted, I can skip over. So that takes a lot of that stress that you're talking about away from you. I think part of what made it successful was being prepared um, and maybe not, but maybe not over preparing. Um, I think if you over-prepare, it's like giving a speech. I think sometimes you can over-practice your speech and then it makes it harder for you. So just get it done. I think, especially with employees, you know, they really don't care. They love the fact that the owner of the company is standing in front of them on a video talking um, and getting some, you know, feedback from the owner. I think that's really valuable, but it's just, it would be just as valuable if you had a manager doing it, but you just got to fight through that and get it done. And I think, Having material, the other thing too is if you have material to go over on screen, you then become a smaller icon up in the corner and it, it really takes the focus off of you and puts the focus on the material that you're talking about. And I think that was really important. I did a, um, another one with a PowerPoint slide presentation and being able to just go through the slides on screen and you're not really on the screen, you're really just voice over that makes it really easy. So maybe start with something like that where you're not the primary focus of the video and then maybe work yourself into doing more videos where you're more predominant and maybe more the face of the video. That maybe would be my advice. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. And so one, one of the things that I'd absolutely recommend is simply a screencast video. Like you're saying, like t make a keynote or even a, um, uh, it could be you scrolling through your Word doc or PDF or whatever makes it really easy. Um, and on a Mac, uh, so you mentioned you're using a Mac, the program that's built in that I love for that is called QuickTime. And um, I'm going to share my screen and show you guys just how easy this is for those of you who use a Mac. Um, QuickTime is built in and you can click uh, screen recording. And then in the options section, make sure that you're, you're using the right microphone. I would either use the built-in or if you have an external mic, you'd select that. And you can, you can kind of click and drag this around. And I'll, I'll share one of the things that I do when I make um, a screencast video is I, I can uh, put this screen, I can put QuickTime and only highlight the section of the slides right see how I'm, I'm zooming this down and then then we click record and now you can actually use the presenter notes underneath here and look at it and nobody else can see that they just see the main slide so that that's that that would involve just a little bit of editing to use quicktime um but i i like i, I think what you were saying was you're using 
you're just recording straight in Zoom, like a solo meeting by yourself? Correct, exactly. I do it in Zoom and um, I'll see if you can see kind of what it looks like. Um, you know, it's just me in the background and talking. And then as soon as I um, get back into the video, it will jump forward and it'll bring the text onto the screen and you kind of disappear. And um, it's just really simple. And I'll be honest, I didn't even do any editing. I, I did it in one take, start to finish. I did very little. The only editing that I may have done um, on a few of them was adding some text over the screen, just, you know, like an introduction type thing. So people know what they're watching. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the other issue I have, I guess, with YouTube and you hit on that is the organization of it. So I tried to make as many things on screen to, so they know what they're watching. So they're not wasting their time. Yeah. That's, so that is one of the features of Wistia that I love is that you can customize that's called the thumbnail mm -hmm. and you can either upload one or pick a still frame from the video. You can't customize that on YouTube until you reach a certain level of YouTube usership, which takes a long time. Um, well, well, awesome, Tim. Th this has been really helpful. I think the, the best word that you've used today in regards to video is done. It's just get it done, okay? Get it done. You know, because honestly, um, and I, 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 you can see I enjoy video gear and I've invested a lot in it and I, you know, but it, it can be a, a trap where I see a lot of business owners who, who will say, oh, I don't have the right camera or I don't have the right this. And it's like, no, man, get, get a backdrop, 100 bucks, 200 bucks or whatever your, your printer is going to cost. Hang it behind you and, and just use whatever you have. Your computer probably has a webcam. Um, you could use your smartphone. I do a lot of video on my iPhone. I have a simple tripod. And I, I like that you just did the one take the one take wonder, right? And you probably yeah. sneeze and cough and say, um, but who cares, right? Like you're making a training video that's going to really help people. So, so good job. It's not a marketing it's video. video. It's not. Right? It's and even just it, training. And even if it was, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I, th yeah. I think, I think it's really easy to get hung up on making video perfect and then never doing any of it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. And, you know, just a simple blank wall in your house or your office works just great for a backdrop. You don't have to do, I just kind of went, I thought that would add a little piece of flair to it, but in reality, it doesn't add really anything to the video. It just, um, you know, added one more piece, but I also dragged my feet doing it because I was waiting for that piece to get produced. Tim, another thing that I really like about your setup is that you are pretty much, how long would it take you to get set up to record your videos? Maybe eight minutes tops. Yeah, Super right. Simple. So, so you drop it down behind your chair and you put up your lights and, your, and you don't even, you just use your camera on your computer. So that's right. how I have my own home office configured is I have, I have, this, I have this nice mic that I use for the podcast, but um, it's built into my desk. I don't need to go get the microphone, take it out, uh, set up my camera or anything. I just have it ready to go. I, I, you know, it's like, I just turn it on and start recording. So I think um, making it easy for yourself, if you are going to, if you are going to produce video content, whether marketing or training, I would encourage you to try and configure your desk in a way that the, whatever's behind you looks professional. You know, it, it could be, for me, I have this wood wall. Um, for, for you, it could be a, a branded little sign. Um, and then decent lighting, front lighting is really important. We never want to be backlit in video. And yeah, um, $25 lights on Amazon are totally fine. And you know, honestly, the lights, um, they do kind of complicate it a little bit. If you plan ahead and and do it during the daytime when you have good natural light. If you have an office with natural light, I think it works better and it's easier and it's less fidgeting. I, you can spend a lot of time wasted trying to adjust lights and get things right. Yeah. So again, if you can think ahead maybe and try it, you know, during different times of the day, that might be your best bet. Um, but you know, in, like I did mine in the evening, so I had to, um, you know, and it right. was dark. So, 
Well, one, one challenge I will say with the, the light from the windows is if it's too bright, it can overpower you in there. So I actually, the way I use my home office, I have blackout curtains. I block out the light. And then I just, I just uh, when I was building this office, I had LED lights put into the ceiling. And those, those, that's, the only, that's the only light I'm using right now. And uh, yeah, you're right, because using those ring lights or those other video lights, they can complicate it. So again, keep it simple. Good enough is, is great. <laughs> and well, I have a, a friend of mine's a video production person, and he always keeps telling me, A, keep it simple, and B, don't worry about getting the next greatest thing. Just master what you currently have. So if you have a, a, an iMac or something with a camera, just master using that camera and you'll be way ahead. Yeah, because you, learning to use a DSLR or mirrorless camera is kind of like getting a rocket ship. When I got my camera, it was a huge learning curve. Whereas, yeah, use your computer webcam or iPhone. So in essence, again, keep it simple. Just get it done. You can always redo it. You can always make a new one down the road, but get it done and get it out using it and get the feedback from your employees and you'll make them better and better as you go. Right on. Well, thanks, Tim. And for, uh, for everyone else listening, uh, learn more. We've got more content at ramblinjackson.com slash podcast where you can learn more about cool ways to inspire your team and get new clients. So thanks, Tim. You're welcome.